Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald at the Adams County Fairgrounds with the Lewis Round Barn, which we featured in a recent program. Told the interesting history of this barn, the uh, mammoth job of moving it here from another location, and the museum inside. Well, during this program, you might notice that there are some other buildings here as well. The log cabin, which of course was built by members here just recently. There's also the one-room schoolhouse, which was uh, moved here from elsewhere in Adams County. And uh, just over my shoulder, the newest addition to these buildings in this museum is the print shop. Let's start in there. Paul Woodworth, you not only get the job of like manning the printing equipment, you also got the job of building this brand new building, didn't you? Yeah, me and, and all the club members that helped. We, we just got it done last year, right before wow. the show, and we had it functional, and we printed uh, kids' names on bookmarks. Yeah. This is a terrific, becoming a terrific museum now, because you have this, this old printing equipment that Quincy University gave to you that they mm -hmm. had been using for years and years and years. And let's, if we start off to our left here, we can see the oldest printing mechanism you have is from 1817. <coughs> George Washington might use something like this. Yeah, it's a, it's a George Washington style press. This was built uh, by Reliance. Uh -huh. And uh, <coughs> it, uh, it's one of, it's our oldest pieces of equipment. You would set your individual letters up and you would, uh, it's not set up now, but yeah, but however you would, you'd want it to you'd, print you'd out. You'd ink them down with a leather dauber, uh -huh. and you get it all inked down. You would put your piece of paper on it, and you would roll it in under. Uh huh. And you'd reach over here and grab the arm and give it one pull. Oh man, that really compresses it, doesn't it? <coughs> And that actually it down. compresses it down, uh -huh. which would, would print, press it down on the letters in the ink or, and print it. And you would roll it back out. Mm -hmm. Pick it you up. Turn it over. And, would be and your impression would be right there because right there. you would have inked those letters. And you would ink it down again. Yeah. Put another piece of paper on, one at a time. Each copy was so time consuming, yep. wasn't it? Yep. 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 And you were new, do the process it. again, huh? Pull it down yeah. again. Okay, for every copy. <coughs> Things got better though, because over here, you could act, this. What, what did they call <coughs> this? This was like oh, maybe eighteen seventy yeah, or eighteen seventy to eighteen ninety five. Uh huh. <coughs> they was uh, Hone started them years ago, and then they went to Vander Vander Stock, and they would put an advertising name in here. They paid for it. They would go and donate them to the little print shops in each little town. Uh -huh. And if you wanted a, a flyer bill, uh, printed or an envelope or stationery, mm -hmm. or and they used them for proof presses too. <clears throat> you would ink them down. Okay. Go over to your paper cutter and get you some paper. Put it right on top of it, and they always said, "Roll the presses." Roll the presses. We're going to roll it over. <laughs> and that—that's the way it printed. It. I'll be darned. Hold that up for the camera. <clears throat> 2014 history show. Okay, Adams County. Terrific. So we, that's uh, rolling the presses. We, we print these for the kids when they come around on school yeah. day. Uh huh. And uh, and you just anchor down again, yeah. lay another piece of paper yeah. on, and roll it again. Okay. Things really got better. Oh once yeah. They, once they entered, or they uh, they started uh, <coughs> making this thing though. This is I, I always heard the linotype. I, uh, it's a linotype, but mm -hmm. I never knew the word. The word came from linotype. Yeah. Instead of one letter at a time. There you go. Yeah, you get some <coughs> light on would, it. You would print a whole line of type. Line of type. Okay. 
This particular one is a Mergenthaler. Yeah, they invented this in 1886. This <coughs> is a Model 10, <coughs> about 1913. Uh -huh. <coughs> and this, this big particular machine has got 43,000 pieces. Wow. And Otmar uh, kept inventing more elaborate ones up to, I think, Model 32. Uh -huh. <coughs> he finally went insane. But <coughs> you would type, each little letter would come down, you would set it up in the, <coughs> in the frame. Okay. Okay, let's see if it'll go work. Take it up the elevator. Yeah. Clutch it. Yep, I gotta go this one. My goodness. <coughs> yep. Being stubborn this morning. Yeah. You gotta get it warmed up. <laughs> this is kind of cool today. Let's just try it one more time. Okay. It's supposed to pick one of those up, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. The whole line. Yeah. Yep, didn't do it again. Okay. Well, we'll grab one and show what a line of type looks like. You've just created a line of type. Uh -huh. <coughs> These little brass mats mm -hmm. on the front side said this is a number seven. Yeah. You turn it around, and there's an indentation of a number seven. Okay. You put them all in a line. And as the <coughs> this is a melting pot, the piston would go down. Mm -hmm. It would force the hot printer's metal out through the throat and into the mold wheel, <coughs> which would cast one line of type. Let me see if I can see that. Okay, like that. So it was much faster. Absolutely. And once you got done with it, you put it back in the pot and remelt it, mm -hmm. which was the first recycler. Right. So so these are all reusable again. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Terrific. Time and time again. Yeah. And you would take this over <coughs> and put it in the cutter. And you would cut it off to call them whip. <clears throat> oh, okay. Now, that now we're we going to lock it in the chain. Clamp that down there. Yep. Okay. And you take your planer, you tap it down uh -huh. on the stone, which makes it all nice and flat. And we put it in the Chandler Price. <coughs> this is a foot-powered press. And one piece of paper at a time. <coughs> but not one letter at a time. Now you're, no, you, you picked up the piece because you got a whole line of it. A line. Line. Okay. You can, you can have cuts on there with pictures. And you would crank it and pull one out, put one in. Well, that is pretty Put fast, actually, when you think about it. Put one in. <laughs> <coughs> and if you get your fingers caught oh, in there, no, you're you out of luck. Huh? Okay. Okay, here's what I want to show. If you can slow it down just a little bit. What you've got here is you've got these rollers, right? Right. And they go down, and they where do they pick <coughs> up the ink? they got to pick up some ink somewhere, right? <coughs> the ink plate on top. They come up. Okay, that's and roll. Cool. It okay. makes it nice and even. Uh -huh. It rolls, it comes down, goes over the line, inks it, ah, and then comes back and prints it. Terrific. Wow. Ingenious. And a, a good printer can print 500 copies an hour. And let's see what you got there. Okay, that one's a little sloppy, but... Yeah. And, and for the, when the kids come out here, you get... <coughs> we print, print their names. Their names on something. Yeah, and yeah, we, we, we get a bookmarker. Isn't that neat. 
Sarah Huseman, you, you, you didn't teach in a one-room schoolhouse. No. But you're a former teacher. You taught for many I years. I taught for many years, yeah. but I attended school in a one-room school. Did house. you? Yeah. So when you when you help people through here and you give guided tours, et cetera, of this one-room schoolhouse, does it bring back a lot of memories? Oh, yes, yes. And everyone that comes through has memories of those one-room schools. Or not many people are there anymore because... Oh, my grandma or my grandpa or my aunt or my uncle yeah. went to a one-room school. Yeah, yeah. And they had a lot of stories, yeah. and it, it's fun. Yeah. It was it was an education that we can't really give kids these days. It, you had the younger kids being helped by the older kids. Exactly. And the teacher needed help from everybody because one teacher can only do so much, right? That's right. So it was a real little community, wasn't it? Exactly. The whole community knew each other, they helped each other, the children walked to school. Uh, in the early days they rode horses to school. There was uh, usually two miles was the greatest distance that they had to go, maybe sometimes three. Mm -hmm. Cut across the fields, sometimes uh, livestock would be in those fields, you need to be scurried over the fence <laughs> to hurry to get to school. And of course it. you had a lot of de things to detain you along your way as you walk to school. Well, too. sure, kids are easily distracted. Oh, of course. You know? yeah. um, this building used to be, it, when it was a one-room schoolhouse, it was in Hancock County. That's right. And you and your association have done quite a bit of work of trying to find out where the remaining schools are, and we're going to get to that. But first, when this was moved, it's interesting. You found all kinds of papers, tests, photographs inside the walls. Yes. Of, and here's a good example right here. This is how you did it. In taking it apart, you had to get into the walls. And these kids, our teachers, or both, had hidden many of these. Here's a ruler, for instance. There's a ruler. Yeah. With, with inside the wall, old tests. Some of these are as, as old as 1902. There's a good penmanship exercise right there. Exactly. Isn't that fascinating yeah, what you can find if you just if you uh -huh. just look a little bit? Uh-huh. The Bosterts were the ones who deconstructed the building uh -huh. in Hancock County, moved it to their farm in Adams County, which was located between Big Neck and Coatesburg on uh -huh. the blacktop. Yeah. And they reconstructed it so that it's in the very same condition that it is now. And then the old time association, or the, t the t retired, teachers retired teachers found it. And let's go see how you did your research to actually find this place. This is fascinating. Well... You and your group did an awful lot of homework, didn't you? Well, we... I just happened to know the Bosterts, and then they allowed us to move the building. But these buildings are still standing in Adams County. Many of them have been made into homes. Uh-huh. And these are the ones that... When, considering the fact that one-room schools in Adams County began closing in 1945. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of those are, have some age on them too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them were used for storing of bales. Some were completely gutted. Yeah, yeah, and some of them I assume are still just kind of rotting away yes, until somebody wants to pay attention to them and give them a little loving, huh? That's right, okay. that's right. Hey, what, did, did kids really wear dunce caps? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that, that seems to be part of the story. No, usually uh, I don't think they wore dunce caps. <laughs> if you had brothers and sisters in the school, you'd know by the time you got home what you did that was incorrect. Oh, I imagine day. word tra traveled yeah, pretty quick. I you think didn't. It did. your, your mom yeah. found out pretty quick whether you got in trouble that day. That's right. Well, this uh, life. This is where life went on. Exactly. For kids from from the eighteen eighties uh, to nineteen forties, this right. was daily life. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody crammed into one spot. So the first graders would be here, the eighth graders over here. We had the recitation bench. And everybody bench in the middle, huh? Here for certain grades to come up and recite their memory uh -huh. work or do their reading or have their spelling or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And, and poor teacher, she was all on oh. her own. She had to do it all. She had to teach first through eighth grade. Exactly. And then she had to hope that the eighth graders would help the first graders, right? Yes. And Which they usually did, I guess. Yeah. Um, and, and there was a variety of, of teaching tools. And I find this interesting because you told me about a gentleman who is from central Illinois. And, and many, of our, many of our viewers will remember the Dick and Jane books. Dick and Jane, that's right.
Our New Friends, and this is the Dick and Jane series, by William S. Gray. William S. Who, Gray. Uh, William S. Gray has a local connection, doesn't he? Yes, he was born and raised in Coatesburg, Illinois. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He must have written dozens of Dick and oh, Jane books. Yes, he did. And we all remember them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there were flyers. I just wish that when they closed our school, I don't know what happened to them. There were pages of flyers. What do you call those, Gene? <laughs> the flyers, that you, just every page was enlarged. And it, it mm -hmm. just made school so much fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just made school a great deal of fun. What you all have done here is, you, you mentioned, you called this the recitation bench. I'm not sure what that is, but did, did some unlucky kid have to uh, have his lesson done and come up here and do his recitation? No, the whole class would come up. Oh, when it was their class. turn, huh? Whole, whole class would come up. When okay. it was their turn, yeah. So, like, you would read your homework here? You would come up here and, 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 sh and show what you did at home? or yeah. What? yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Or you would have all of the third graders come up, and they would, teacher would ask questions of their assignment, and then they would help each other mm -hmm. out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Reading one time, 15 minutes, we have a schedule up here. Then we'd have arithmetic. And then we would have geography. Of course, we had uh, recess in the morning. Yeah. And a l nice long lunch. And of course, you brought your lunch and your lunch pails. And they might not be very fancy dinner pails like you'd have today. Yeah, yeah. You would have, it could be a caro syrup container. And you may bring a sandwich. <laughs> you may bring fresh fruit. You may bring fruit in a jar. Whatever mom had. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and in a lot yeah. of those years in the 30s, for instance, mom didn't have much. No. And it was homemade bread. It wasn't uh, store-bought yeah. bread. And Another recess at 2 to 2.15. Yeah. And then... We have... Well, they really moved along, didn't they? Yeah. Every 15 minutes. Well, yeah. They didn't... You couldn't when you have eight grades. Yeah, like yeah. You didn't... So they expected to know their lesson and help themselves yeah. out and go. Start yeah. at nine, finish at four. Yes, yeah. that'll be dark, wouldn't it? it well, by the time you got In home, it would if you had to walk yeah. home. You it bet. Would. You bet. Um, yeah. Every kid, uh, most we associate this with blackboards, with the with the teacher having a blackboard, but a lot of the kids had slates too. Yes, huh? early on, not in the forties. I uh -huh. know uh, Illinois School Supply sold the books, and that store is still in Quincy. Mm -hmm. uh, Mom would take me down with a list of books, and we'd go to the Illinois School Supply and buy the books. Yeah. Everybody had their, their it would have it would have been a fancy classroom. They had a piano in it. Yes. I, w w but I, this I, was part of the opening exercise every morning. Mm -hmm. You'd come in, say the pledge to the flag, uh, sing some songs. Mm -hmm. uh, then the teacher may read you a book. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know Bambi was just coming out. So the teacher had to be a pianist, too. Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> she, yes. She had to be able to read and write music mm -hmm. and be able to play. That's right. Even if it's rudimentary, but she had to play. And then uh, the parents would all be invited to come to their Christmas programs, <laughs> and the teacher would have to produce the Christmas programs, and each one would memorize the, their part in uh -huh. the Christmas programs. And then every... Uh, Spring when school was out, big family picnic. Ah, yeah. Some of the pictures that we have obtained of years back, we have such large groups, we know that it's the whole community mm -hmm. came in mm -hmm. for okay. their family gathering. Now, the teacher was not only a teacher and a musician, but the teacher probably had to build the fire, too, didn't exactly. she? Exactly. <laughs> you had to get the fire school warmed up before you got there. And yeah. you, students may bring in the wood or the coal uh -huh. from the coal shed. They would also go out and get uh, water from mm -hmm. the hand pump that was outside. Yeah. No running water. Yeah. And then, of course, the bathroom facilities, girls' bathroom out back this way, boys this yeah. way, yeah. toilet. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> so when you were in, inside and you needed to go to the bathroom, you had your hand signals. Number one or number two. Okay, so we go to the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so Leave it to retired teachers to do probably too much research. <laughs> but this is, 
you, come over, we come over collect here, a lot of things, don't we? You have documented a lot about these schools, and not just about the buildings themselves, but about what it was like. Yes. And this is how, when you bring people through here, and they say, well, how do you know that? Well, because people like you either went to school here, or you've done your research, and you have all these wonderful old photographs of, of classes, and these are mostly from Adams County, aren't they? They're all from Adams all County. All from Adams County. Mm -hmm. What a wealth of information this is. This would be a, I think, your, I think your library would really love to have this. This is really something well, else. It's, uh, we appreciate anything that anyone brings into oh, us, yeah. and every year we get a few more things. Uh, it's terrific. In addition to the pictures, they've, some of them have brought in attendance books, and uh, a couple years back, wow. a gentleman from California came in and wanted to prove to his grandchildren that he had attended one of these schools. Mm -hmm. So he took a picture of the attendance book of the year that yeah. he attended here. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for this little tour. This is terrific. Thank you for coming, <laughs> Mark. Gene Williman, back in the, in the day when this was moved here, you were the president of the Retired Teachers Association of Adams County, right? That's right. And yeah. you and Sarah were determined to get a schoolhouse on this property. There was a, you had a demonstration down there, but it wasn't a real schoolhouse. That's right. right, yeah. Why was it important to you? Well, you know, what happened back when we went to school, many of us in one-room schools, that kind of thing is not available anymore. So we try to be, bring that memory back to people. Yeah. And the best way to do it was to have a real schoolhouse. And uh, a lot of people helped us do that. Yeah. The old-timers and all the Adam County retired teachers were so helpful yeah. financially and with artifacts and with just helping get the job done. And, and that's not all. Uh, you, you put together, you built this board here, which mm -hmm. shows where your contributions came from. That's right. So you had a lot of painstaking work in, in not only this, but you probably went around and asked a lot of these people for help, and they came through. That's right. And when you recognize them, that promotes more people doing the same thing. So mm -hmm. that was our idea there, just to try to get more and more people involved. And we've been fortunate that uh, a lot of people did contribute in the name mm -hmm. of their... Uh, relatives or something like that and mm -hmm. it just without finances you can't do these kind of things oh no we're no. just grateful that we did get yeah. the finances and the help we needed oh this is a, it's a terrific preservation job mm -hmm. it really is and and the research you all have done is very impressive yeah. yeah thank you if we had a list of names of people who helped us with this it'd be a long list and I could name <laughs> some of them but we're getting yeah. many but it was a combined effort of community and retired teachers yeah. and we're just grateful for all of that yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Dave Lubert, here just behind the round barn is a kind of kind of new log cabin. Right. I mean, what, eight, maybe eight years old? Yes, it is. Why did you want to put a log cabin back here? Well, they just kind of fit in with the other stuff we got here. They had a foundation poured for when they tore down, but it didn't make it. It let it go too long and it rotted, so mm -hmm. I decided to... Uh, Help build us in here. Yeah. You, you've built log cabins before, haven't you? Yeah, one out the uh, home place where my brother Charlie lives. Built one out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, they looked at that and seen what they kind of liked it. So then uh, decided they'd build one here. Yeah. I told them I'll build one like that. Yeah. But yeah. To keep it simple. You had some help, though, too, didn't you? Yes. Raymond Moss and Evan Hines were the, were the three that really put the work to it. Yeah. In fact, don't we have a picture of the three of you guys right here? Yeah. And is that, uh, is that like pretty soon, shortly after you finished it? Yeah, pretty well. Yeah. We got it uh, started in April, I think it was. We cut the logs in January, and then in April we uh, took and started assembling them. Mm -hmm. And then uh, by the fair time we had it up, but it wasn't chinked on the outside. Uh -huh. So we had to do that later on. Yeah. Little, it, is it done now? Is it all chinked and done? And all except the inside. Yeah, so. yeah. It could, it could be a little... We're standing here on, on an, a day in early May, and it's cold outside. Yes, it and is. And it's pretty cold in here. It's, this still leaks quite a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, the <laughs> doors aren't airtight or nothing else. But we do have a fire going. That's yeah, fun. and I'll tell you what, this fireplace is really great. Because you, you guys even, you even cut the, your, your brother even cut the stone for this, right? Yeah, he helped, and Evan Hines and myself. And wow. He said, uh, 
I wouldn't let him lay any, but he's a mason too, so he yeah. he knows what he's doing. And, and that's what you that's what you did for a living, right? Right. Uh, brick and stone. Right. But and, so so you were right at home here. Were you right at home with the wood too? Did you not feel too bad. not too bad? Like the other one at the home place, I told him I like to build a cabin out there for passed on. You yeah. know, so he said I got the ground, and I'll help you with it, and we put one out there then. So it was, worked out real well. What kind of wood did you use to build this? It's most of it's white oak and uh, uh, red oak. Red oak and white oak. Yeah. Okay. And you chose that because it would last forever, or what? Yeah, pretty well. And a lot of them, uh, red oak the trees are you know smaller and straighter, you know, and everything worked out real good. Mm-hmm. Because I had my mill, and I cut them all about eight by eight logs, and uh, <laughs> did some chopping on the outside. And, Feathered the edges and looks reasonably like the old ones. Yeah, yeah. And so you uh, and you have a mill that you can you can haul around with you and go from from stand to trees to stand to trees. Yeah, I have a portable bandsaw yeah. mill I built and cut the logs on and everything yeah. else. So yeah, it worked out real good. Yeah, some of it came from your brother's property and some of it came from elsewhere, huh? Yeah, yeah. brothers and Raymond Moss. Had yeah, some. Yeah. We went out and cut at his place first and then finished up at Charlie's. Uh, I'll bet when the kids come in here, when you have a field trip out here, I'll bet they can't believe how small a log cabin was. Yeah, and raise that many kids yeah. in here. Yeah. You know, it's uh, amazing how they did it. I, it sure is. It and, sure uh, is. Just heating with the uh, wood, you know, it's a uh, mm -hmm. real challenge for them. Mm -hmm. so. but, you got, but you got a sleeping loft. Yeah. So you know you got a living, you got an eating area and a, and a and a cooking area and a place to, uh, you know, socialize a little bit or just to live. And then you, you got your, your place where you can get out of the way and go to bed. Yeah. Put the kids to bed first and just yeah. stand them up in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, listen, terrific job, yeah, and well, and boy, it's you. a good thing you guys put the fireplace in here because we need it today. Feels good today. Yes, it does. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, feels great. A couple of times a year, the old timers invite school kids from Adams County to come in and see all that's here. But if you're not a school child and you just want to drop by and go through the uh, Lewis Round Barn, you can do that May through October on the second Sunday of each month. With another Illinois story in Adams County, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.